I want to first talk about how do we use sports uh, to close social gaps, to address the unlevel playing field. Uh, I, actually, I learned a lot uh, from the SEA Games and the Asian Games. When we went to SEA Games, we, we look at the sports that gave a lot of medals to a lot of countries, track and field, mm -hmm. and also swimming. We lost out in terms of medal count because of these sports. We just didn't have enough medals. And as a result, we have to ask, how come those days you have Jeffrey Ong, you have Nuro Huda, what happened to that pool of talent? And then I began to look at the ecosystem, the support structure. If you want people to swim, you've got to make sure there are enough swimming pools. Public pools, a lot of them have shut down. Why? Because maintenance is very expensive. And so now we are um, exploring. That's, that's my next step, to talk to TNB. Uh, I would definitely like to see um, operational costs to maintain sports facilities become really affordable so that investors will start building these things and the poor will have access to this. Now, swimming pools, when, when you have only those who can afford condominium to be able to swim and access pools, you are shutting out a big chunk of the population from becoming your talent. And so we look at the social data, the pro problem with drowning. So many children drown every year. Every school holiday, we read about children drowning. And so with that data, we wrote to the police, asked for hotspots for drowning areas. Okay. They gave us, and then we say, okay, we are going to convert our JBSN, Jabatan Belia, then Sukan Negara activity funds to create a class renang program for B40 children. Okay. So you have the hotspots identified, the district, and then we went out to look for pools. We fund the children who register, free of charge for them. We got people like Decathlon, sponsoring swimming suit goggles. Those are not cheap. We have Alliance Insurance coming to give insurance for every participant, right? And Milo providing drinks when they come for the training. Now, it's free of charge. We go to the PPR, we register these children. But because there's a long waiting list, uh, they don't have to pay, but we pay Must Swim, the certified coaches, swimmers. A lot of them are ex-athletes, right? They train these kids in six lessons. They give them confidence in water. And these kids then can further pursue swimming lessons at a very affordable rate. Um, and out of these numbers, a lot of children have graduated last year. This year, we are expanding. Uh, we are now testing out free swimming lessons for senior citizens in flood-prone areas. Okay. Okay, like Sagamat, for example. Mm. Every year there's flood. But we you know, this if you if you don't know how to swim at a young age, even when you're 60, you won't have that skill. And if you live in a flood prone area, then there is a risk involved. So we are now venturing into for senior citizens and children with uh, disabilities. Um some of the feedback we receive from parents, uh they say, you know, the kids are so excited that if lesson is on Sunday, they wear the swimming suit to sleep on Saturday because they are so thrilled to be playing in the water. So how do you feel about that? What are your highlights? What are your hopes and expectations on the field for the football team, for our squash players? For to, me, to me, what my athletes say about me matter most. Uh, at the end of the day, I would be able, I want to be able to hear that, you know, Hannah help fix the ecosystem so that we can prosper in our sports. Uh, that to me is my drive in my fight for our athletes. I, I mean, there's so many ministries, so many ministries in charge of youth, the portfolio, you know, higher education, education ministry, human resource, uh, even so many like science ministry. Everybody has a component of youth in their ministry. Uh, but for me, I really want to help the struggling youth, the people, the, the youth that people don't want to help. That's why we started talking about youth who are bankrupt, uh, second chance in life, those who are struggling with addiction. These are all the intervention that we are now planning uh, this year to look at how we can help them turn over a new leaf. Because I feel if I help those who are affected, then they become productive. And then, you know, that can be translated into dollar and cents in how they can contribute back to Malaysia. Yeah. The esports industry is a thriving industry. It is a billion dollar industry. Uh, and uh, I had to 
remove my own ignorance when I met the boys at Asian Games uh, and the, the routine that they had to go through, uh, sleep early, eat well, train, and then they have mental coach uh, is so strict. Uh, and people assume that these boys are just playing computer games, right? But they don't understand that there's a whole fitness regime placed on them. Um, I, I met some of the athletes uh, and it's quite remarkable. Uh, a lot of the young people today see this as a career. There are so many new professions coming up for young people. Uh, if you speak to children today, they all want to be influencers. Uh, and parents don't understand it. They, they just don't get it. And... Um, they still want the traditional method of, you know, you get a degree, make sure you're an engineer, lawyer, doctor, an accountant. Uh, but the young people today don't think like that. So for me, representing the voice of the young, I just want for us to be able to catch up, to be able to adapt to the change in the global scene, right? And making sure Malaysians are not left behind, but at the same time, putting in safeguards. Like, you know, we have the guidelines to ensure the esports is safe for children, that those who are suffering from addiction will get help. We have an agency called Impact looking into esports. Uh, Impact is also helping us uh, look at programs for Rakan Muda. Esports has led to the creation of Rakan Digital in our 10 new lifestyle. Uh, we also support athletes going to represent Malaysia, you know, when they are going for training on that. But like I said, Esports is a huge industry, which means you have many, many, many players and many, many, many athletes. We are not able to fund everybody. Uh, that is a challenge that I have in always determining who to support, which team to fund. Yeah, uh, but I also know that esports has a lot of sponsorship. There's a lot of money flowing through this because there's a lot. Of the 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 audience ship is huge. Yeah, and um. I am more interesting and interested to, I think, fix whatever roadblocks that are in the way for them so that they don't have to depend on government for fun and flourish on their own.